Military training, they will continue on to technical training to learn the skills needed to perform in their unique specialties. They will then transition onto numerous bases around the world, some working directly with our sister services. Over the hundreds of thousands of American citizens that enter the workforce each year, less than 1% have joined the ranks of the United States military. These airmen have reached a milestone in their military journey and will require your continued support to assist them in their future endeavors. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of our official party and the playing of the national anthem. Please remain standing for the invocation given by Chaplain Lowenberg. Let us pray. Almighty God, we call on you this morning with great thanks and full hearts. We thank you for guiding each of us to this moment, for helping these members of the Mustang family fulfill their dream of serving their nation in uniform. Lord, when we put the uniform on each morning, it is a sign of commitment to something greater than each of us, an acknowledgement of the awesome power and responsibility that has been placed into our hands. And we ask you to continue to watch over us and protect us, for it is your sheltering presence that gives us the strength to march on, to fly, fight, and win. We thank you, God, for blessing this squadron and this wing with incredible leadership, for blessing us with the many MTIs who pour out all that they have so that the new airmen standing before us this morning have a stronger foundation upon which to build their careers. It took each and every person sitting in the stands here and watching via the live stream to get to this moment, and we are grateful for their hard work, their dedication, and their love. Continue to bless them, God, and guard and protect each of them in their journeys. Lord, as we mark this moment of transition, we must also reflect on where we have been. The time in training has been challenging, physically, mentally, spiritually, and we pray now that the lessons learned stay with us and cause us to grow as individuals, as airmen, and as wingmen. God, continue to watch over all those stationed around the world today, some in harm's way, and bring them home safely and speedily to the waiting arms of their loved ones. Dear God, bless this land we all call home, that we may all truly know its goodness and kindness, that the best of us is what shines through despite the darkness. God, we thank you for mornings like this, the ones that remind us of how much good we have to offer and how many people you have called to do incredible work. Cause us to remember that even in our darkest hour, 
you, we have your light within us, that we were each made in your holy image. And let the words of our pledge shine through as the shining beacon on the hill, that we will work to ensure this nation is blessed with liberty and justice for all. Scripture teaches us that it is justice that we shall pursue and righteousness that should be our guiding principle. Help us in all these pursuits and continue to bless our lives and the lives of our families. In your holy name we pray, amen. Thank you, Chaplain Lohenberg. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's basic military training graduation ceremony. We would like to introduce our distinguished guests, beginning with the host for today's ceremony, the Commander and Superintendent, Air Force Basic Military Training, Colonel Megan Schaefer, and Chief Master Sergeant Larry Gaetan. Our guest speakers, the Commander and Command Chief, 67th Cyber Wing, Colonel Jeffrey Phillips, and Chief Master Sergeant Robert Hopkins. From the graduating squadron, the commander and superintendent, 323rd Training Squadron, Lieutenant Colonel Raimundo Van and Chief Master Sergeant Gabriel Lewis. Also in attendance with us today, Command Chief 37th Training Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Michael Morgan. The Vice Commander, Department of Air Force Inspection Agency, Colonel Terry Holmes. Although time does not permit us to introduce all of our distinguished guests, the 737 Training Group is proud to welcome each of you. We hope you enjoy today's ceremony. Today's ceremony celebrates the remarkable accomplishments of the graduating class. Our nation's future rests upon the dedication of this new class of warriors who we honor today. Chief Master Sergeant Hopkins will now say a few words. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and our graduates. Viewing from uh, live stream, welcome to have you. Airmen, you are joining a team of professionals dedicated to integrity, service, and excellence. While the Airmen's coin will not be physically presented today at this ceremony, it carries with it the history of our Airmen. The men and women, women that have come before you have airlifted troops and supplies into the jungles of Vietnam, executed precision airstrikes in Afghanistan and Iraq, and they have delivered humanitarian aid to villages in South America and Africa. They have, launched, they have launched missiles and flown satellites, defended airstrips and strengthened partnerships. They have stood on the North Pole, the South Pole, and everywhere in between. Today marks a special day for our newest airmen, for they could not have done this without the support and, of their family and their friends. They've completed the instruction from their military training instructors, and they have committed with unwavering resolve to join the greatest Air Force the world has seen to date. I'm truly honored to call you an airman and proud to serve alongside you. This past week, there's been notable events in our Air Force history. On April 18, 1942, the US Air Force, then the Army Air Force, launched 16 B-25 bombers from atop the USS Hornet, bringing air power to bear as the first air operation against the Japanese during World War II. This was known as the Doolittle Raid. This raid, while fraught with challenges such as launching a, a ground-based bomber off of 300-foot flight deck, had minimal impact to Japan's war fighting capability, but resulted in a major psychological victory raising U.S. morale. Further, it shaped the environment of our enemy, repositioning forces, helping to change the outcome of the war. This facet of a larger operation is filled with one-offs and first-evers by our most precious weapon system. That weapon system is you, it's our people. 
Your oath of enlistment has ushered you into a legacy steeped in heritage, and the future is yet to be written and continues with you. You are the next in our line of heroes, and in the words of our Chief of Staff of the Air Force, General Brown, it's to accelerate change or lose. It'll be through your ingenuity, your innovation, your cunning, that you will shape the capability of our, our Air Force into the, into the capability the country requires for us to always remain above, and when we're required to engage our enemy, to have the lethality to fly, fight, and win through air power anytime, anywhere. Airmen, I leave you with this. You're joining a team that will look to, to you to define what the character of our Air Force will be in the years to come. We have the, most, the utmost faith in your ability because every time you recite the Airmen's Creed, you adamantly proclaim that you will not fail, and we believe you. As of this moment, you are my teammate. You're all of our teammates. You are my brother. You're my sister. You're my wingman. And today, you are an American Airman. Congratulations. <laughs> Military training instructors, you may proceed.
Congratulations, Airmen. Now, how about that squadron pride? Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as our newest airman recite the Airman's Creed. I am an American airman. Thank you. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Colonel Phillips will now come forward and say a few words. Good morning. Let me begin by saying to the families, I can only imagine how disappointed you are that you can't be physically here to support your loved ones. Seven and a half weeks ago, you entrusted us with, your, with our nation's treasure, your sons and daughters. Your support has pushed these airmen to successfully complete basic military training and join the world's greatest air and space forces. I want to take this opportunity to say thank you for your support and encouragement, but more importantly, thank you for your trust. It's my great honor to hold a ceremony introducing 756 airmen from the 323rd Training Squadron as our nation's newest airmen. I can't begin to tell you how truly meaningful it is for me to be here today. 28 years ago tomorrow, I left my small hometown for basic training here at Lackland Air Force Base. I never had a second thought about that decision. I've made lifelong friends and had experiences I could never have imagined. The Air Force has become my family, and now I get to welcome you to that family. Airmen of the 323rd Training Squadron, our Air and Space Force is powered by people, by people like you. Every single one of you joined the world's greatest Air and Space Force, and every single one of you will go into jobs that contribute to our mission. Fly, fight, and win, air power, anytime, anywhere. Whether you're training America's newest airmen on the flight line fixing airplanes, at the gates defending our bases, in the mission support or medical groups caring for our airmen and guardians, an intelligence professional or a cyber operator defending our networks and taking the fight to the adversary. Every single one of you contributes to that mission and every single one of you makes us the greatest in the world. As you start your Air Force journey, I challenge you to think about three things, mission, leadership, and culture. We'll start with mission, which we touched on a little bit. As I mentioned, every one of you plays an important role. Go out and learn your jobs and strive to be the best. We need you to be experts at what you have signed up to do. We'll give you the training and tools you need and only ask that you remain committed to being a member of a high-performing team that does something really important. Next, leadership. Leadership is a skill that is honed continually throughout an airman's career. We need leaders at every level. It does not matter what rank you are, you will have the opportunity to lead. We need you to start adding to your leadership toolkits now so that you can lead more people and bigger missions down the road. Your goal should always be to develop leaders that are able to take your place when you move up or onto different jobs. And finally, culture. The foundation of every win winning team is a strong culture. The strong culture helps, helps airmen feel connected to the mission and to each other. The strong culture enables teams to succeed in difficult times. I challenge you to build cultures based on dignity, respect, camaraderie, and hard work build environments where everyone can succeed personally and professionally. You're about to take an oath, and it is an oath like no other in the world. It's my favorite part of the ceremony. The oath of the military, of military service originated with the Roman Empire, when soldiers would swear oaths to generals or presidents. They were usually for the durations of battles or conflicts. However, you're gonna, you are going to take an oath to an ideal that is greater than any single individual. You are going to take an oath to the Constitution of the United States, and I cannot be more excited to have you join our team. Be proud of what you have accomplished. Be excited about what the future holds in store. 
I would also like to take this opportunity to recognize basic military training's most outstanding performer, someone who demonstrated their ability to successfully navigate all assessments, testing their physical abilities, academic aptitude, and adaptability to the military environment through multiple progress checks. This airman has surpassed all others in challenges of training and earned the distinction of being the top graduate of this class. The top graduate is from Flight 381, Airman Reed Clevenger. The recruiter of Airman Clevenger is Tech Sergeant Matthew Steffens from the 350th Recruiting Squadron, 445th Airlift Wing, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Congratulations. Airman, I just have one question for you. Are you ready to join the ranks of the world's greatest air and space forces? I think they're ready. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand. Colonel Phillips will now administer the oath of enlistment. Now please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your full name. I do solemnly swear or affirm do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will obey the orders of the President of the United States. And the orders of the officers appointed over me. According to regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So help me God. Thank you, Colonel Phillips. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the singing of the Air Force song and departure of our official party. From the 323rd Training Squadron, Flight 377, led by Technical Sergeant Jeremy Scott, Military Training Instructor, Hometown, Aurora, Colorado.
Flight 378, led by Staff Sergeant Austin Hively, military training instructor, hometown Fort Wayne, Indiana. Flight 379, led by Technical Sergeant Skyler Arnold, military training instructor, hometown Boswell, Oklahoma. Flight 380, led by Technical Sergeant Jonah Myers, military training instructor, hometown Everett, Washington. Flight 381, led by Technical Sergeant Damaris Strong, military training instructor, hometown, Killeen, Texas. Academic Excellence, Flight 382, led by Staff Sergeant Nikita Wilson, military training instructor, hometown, Water Valley, Mississippi.
Flight 383, led by Technical Sergeant Jonathan Evans, Military Training Instructor Trainer, hometown Wichita, Kansas. Flight 384, led by Technical Sergeant Andrew Rothstein, Military Training Instructor Trainer, hometown Springfield, Maine. PT Excellence, Flight 385, led by Technical Sergeant Tyler Crawford, Military Training Instructor, hometown Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Flight 510, led by Staff Sergeant Lonnie Miles, military training instructor, hometown Little Rock, Arkansas. Flight 386, led by Master Sergeant Dietrich Modisette, Instructor Supervisor, Hometown, Columbia, South Carolina. Thank you. 
Flight 387, led by Technical Sergeant Matthew Werner, Military Training Instructor, hometown St. Paul, Minnesota. PT Excellence, Flight 388, led by Staff Sergeant Chloe Lynch, Military Training Instructor, hometown Vacaville, California. Flight 389, led by Staff Sergeant Cody Cabe, Military Training Instructor, Hometown, Cibolo, Texas. Flight 390, led by Technical Sergeant Jeremy Fritz, Military Training Instructor, Hometown, Carrollton, Georgia. Flight 391, led by Technical Sergeant Sandra Bice, Military Training Instructor Trainer, Hometown, Georgetown, Texas.
Flight 392, led by Technical Sergeant Theodore Lovedall, Military Training Instructor Trainer, hometown Newport News, Virginia. Commander's Excellence, Flight 393, led by Technical Sergeant William Lewis, Military Training Instructor, hometown Toledo, Illinois. Flight 394, led by Technical Sergeant Miriam DeVito, Military Training Instructor, Hometown, Bellingham, Washington. <laughs> 